Hello, welcome to another one of our videos and today we're looking at a simple way to uh, assess your gait cycle or your walking ability to determine if you're at risk of fall. So obviously very important for an older adult but maybe um, even someone a lot younger recovering from injury and, you know, or some sort of um, disease perhaps that's greatly impaired their, their walking ability or their, their balance as such. So what we've got is a series of tests. So there's eight tests that we're going to run through and we've got Lynn from our older adults class to demonstrate them. And basically you're going to get a scoring, we use a scoring system. So the higher the score, the better. Um, so for, the, for each test, we give a score of three where um, in this first one, if, if the person can walk up and back with no evidence of imbalance and a normal speed, um, normal gait pattern, they get a score of three. If there's a, a sort of a, they have to use assistance or there's a slower speed and some gait deviation, they get a score of two. If they walk really slow speed and there's abnormal gait pat patterns and there's a sign of, uh, you know, falling, they get a score of one. And if they have to use assistance to do it um, or they can't do it at all without assistance, then they get a score of zero. So let's watch Lynn do the first test. Just normal. So, and you're here being about to explain to her what she's going to do on the next one. Next one, we just need to see if she can walk quickly. So, um, so basically, she'll get a score of three if she can easily walk with a, a difference in speed from the previous one. Um, if there's no real demonstration of speed, um, you know, or like there's sort of some deviation in their gait to do so, they get a score of two. Um, if they make hardly any any speed at all, and it's, and they and there's a sign of um, you know imbalance or falling, uh, they get a score of one. And if they cannot change speeds at all, or they need assistance, they get a score of zero. So let's watch Lynn go. As fast as you can. All right, off you go. All right, so she did that fairly easy. So she's got a score of three both times. So she's on a score of six. All right, so the next one I'm going to explain exactly what she has to do here. Now that this next one, when I tell you to look right, you look right. And when I tell you to look left, you look left. And you just keep walking at your normal speed. So not fast, just normal. All right, ready? Go. Look right. Straight ahead. Turn around. Look left. Look straight ahead. Yep. Look right. Very good. Well done. All right. So in that case, uh, Lynn gets a perfect score of three again. So she was able to continue. She make her head turns, but continue walking smoothly with no change in gait. A mild impairment where we give you a score of two. They should, they'd be able to make this, the head turns, but have to change their gait velocity to do so. So there's a minor disruption to their ability to keep walking. A score of one would see we'd see the head turns, um, but they significantly slow down, maybe even stagger, um, and then continue to walk. So they basically have to stop to turn their head. A severe impairment um, would mean like basically just can, cannot do it without having to hold on to something, and a severe disruption of gait. All right, so Lynn obviously made it look easy, so she gets a score of three. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay because it's just about the head turns. Next one's just going looking up and down. So you keep walking and I'll say either look up or look down. Right, so look up, look down, turn around, look up, look down. Yeah, good. All right, so that one is a, a, a similar to the previous one where they're looking horizontally. This one's obviously a lot harder. This one, if someone with vertigo would find this almost impossible, they would fall over. So this one, a, a, a much harder than it looks, all right? So it's hard to sort of keep walking in a straight line when you don't have the the horizontal hori or the horizon in front of you to sort of give you a feedback. So um, this one really is a lot harder than it looks. So um, again, same as the last one, if you can keep walking smoothly with no change in gait, you get a score of three. If you make the head turns, but you have to slow, make some sort of slight change, um, and the, or there's a disruption to your gait cycle, you get a score of two. If you make the head turns, but 
but you have to make a significant slowdown or maybe stagger and recover, you get a score of one. And again, a severe disruption where you get a score of zero is where you have to um, co you know, completely stop, maybe even lose balance. And, you know, reach, reaching for something to sort of not fall, um, which is, you know, which we do see quite a lot in these impairment. This is why it's a, it's a great test to use this one. All right, so then the next one, we, we sort of bring in some pivots and turns and a little bit of agility training to some degree. All right, so I'll explain to Lynn what she has to do. All right, so next one, you're still going to do a pivot and turn. So when you walk, I'm going to say turn and stop. So you turn as quickly as you can to face the opposite direction back to me and stop. Alright, go, stop, that's it, and then turn back and keep walking the other way again, stop, that's it, keep going, come, keep coming, stop, come back to me again, stop, beautiful. Come back to me again. All right, now grip. All right, so in that case, um, this one, you, you know, again, it's a lot harder than it looks for someone who has a walking impairment. They really find it hard to stop quickly and be able to turn quickly without having a fear of falling. So um, again, we give Lynn another perfect score of three. So she's able to easily turn safely and do it within three seconds. Three, three, under three seconds is very good. If you take more than three seconds to turn, um, that's telling us that there's an issue there, all right? So she had no loss of balance with it. Um, a mild impairment, we get a score of two, is where they can do it under three, or maybe take more than three seconds. Um, there's no loss of balance, they're just a bit slow. The, mild, the moderate impairment turned, again, turned slowly, um, but may even need some cueing and maybe some small steps to catch their balance, almost take a, instead of a pivot and turn, almost like, almost walk in a circle. Um, and a severe impairment can't turn safely at all and are looking for something to hang on to because they can really sense that they, they're going to lose it. All right, so uh, once again, Lynn makes that look easy. So on the next one, um, we get her to actually use some an obstacle. So I'm just going to fast forward this. So I'm getting her to set up some hurdles here and basically she just has to walk over them on this first go. So let's watch her go. All right, so you just walk normal speed and step over them like they're a log or something. Alright, off you go. And then coming back. Alright, then on the next go. Okay, so she made that again look pretty easy, just knocked one over at the end there, but but I wouldn't, maybe she just didn't lift her foot up, up, up enough, but she was able to get um, step over them without any change in speed or any sign of imbalance or at all. So she kept her normal gait cycle, it was pretty easy. A mild impairment is that they're able to step over the box, but sort of slow down when they get to them to make sure they can clear it. Uh, moderate impairment, able to step over the box, but you have to really stop and then step over and probably sometimes even try to go around it. We often see that they just don't can't stabilize on their leg, the, the stance leg long enough to get the high, leg high enough to step over it. And and the score of zero with a severe impairment, they just can't do it without anyone, without someone helping them. All right. So on the next one, we ask her to step around the, the hurdle. So we get her to move them. So I'll just get her to, she's going to randomly um, sort of step around them as, as she goes. All right. So let's have a look. So you walk straight to it and then go around it. Yeah. That's it. Very good. And then coming back. Awesome. All right, so very similar to the last one. So again, Lynn gets another perfect score three. Able to walk around them safely without changing your gate speed. No sign of imbalance. Um, the mild impairment, able to step around them, but have to slow down and adjust their steps to clear them. Um, moderate impairment, able to clear them, but must significantly slow their speed and re maybe requires some verbal in instructions to help them. Severe impairment, unable to get around them, walks into them or uh, looks for someone to help them out. All right. Um, the last test is where we look at the stairs. So I'll just get a fast forward this so we can go to that. 
All right, so all is really simple. All she has to do is walk up the stairs and we just ob observe what we see. Let's go up the stairs. Just get back, normal, normal speed. nothing really scientific about that at all but we just need to see if she can do that alternating her feet not using the rail if you can do that then you get a score of three a mild impairment alternate the feet but have to use the rail moderate impairment two feet to us to each stair and definitely need the rail severe impairment can't do it at all all right so that's the eight levels and that's the score so if you get a score that's um, over you want to sort of be 22 to 24 so Lynn got a score of 24 so if she was 21 you know probably sort of in that moderate you know stage where it's not so good if you're under 19 the score then that, that's a real prediction that you're you're a risk for a fall all right so you, you're really aiming for a perfect score maybe no more than two mistakes on the, out of those eight levels um, anything less than that and there's sort of something there that's not right um, and, and the ones you struggle with are the ones that you want to work on and this is another example of where the test actually becomes a great exercise there's many exercises we would use to help with this but um, this is a great sort of way to assess someone or yourself for that matter um, to see where you're at and and really work on it so you don't fall all right so I hope you've enjoyed that video and we'll see you on our next one